That's good. My name is Cass and I'm one of the pastors here at the church and it's such a great thing to have all of us here together across generations in our family service. So good. And today we're going to talk about putting first things first. First things first. Kids, I want to tell you about a really funny story. Once I was packing for my boys when we were going on a holiday and they were two, nearly two and four and I thought, you know what, I probably can ca- get some more things we're going on a plane on a holiday if I put some stuff in their little teeny weeny backpacks. You know, they can carry their own backpacks. But the problem was I kind of put a little bit too much in their backpacks. So they're walking along like this and one of them actually fell on their back like a turtle, dink, with their legs up in the air. And I thought, oh, no, that's terrible. (laughs) And that's a funny story, but there are lots of worries and stresses that kids and grown-ups carry around with them every day. Who, if there's any kids here, have you seen BTN, Behind the News? Put your hand up if you've seen that show. It's a current affairs program for children on ABC. And they went around in 2015 and they interviewed 20,000 kids. That's a lot of kids. They interviewed them and they found out which issues worry kids and young people the most, either all the time or most of the time. We've got some things up on the screen that this survey showed. 43% of kids worry about their future, 39% about their family, 37% about the health, friends, 34, body, 31, bullying, 30%, a third of, nearly a third of kids, world problems, 28, school, 27, and being different, 24%. Just like grown-ups, children and young people have worries and fears too. And kids, it's good for us grown-ups here to be reminded that sometimes you might come across happy, you're bouncing along, you're seeming like you're really engaged in what's happening, but inside, on the inside, sometimes you don't feel too good, right? It's true. Sometimes it's hard to find the right words to talk about your worries. Sometimes you're still learning how to explain how you're feeling. And that's okay because grown-ups can help with this. Growing up, sometimes kids and young people are great observers, but they might struggle to explain or interpret what they notice or feel. And sometimes it takes a kind adult pausing to really notice, to gently ask some open-ended questions, to be patient and to let young people know we're here to listen, really listen. And I say we because we grown-ups can get a lot better at this. Of the 20,000 children surveyed in that same survey, one in five said they would not talk to anyone about their problems. And if that doesn't break your heart, mate, that breaks mine. One in five kids walking around with the weight of the world on their shoulders. That's a lot of kids, heavy hearts, trying to manage life and feeling pretty alone. Of the kids surveyed, 46% said they'd talk to a parent, 24% that said they'd talk to a friend, 5% said they'd talk to a teacher, 4% said they'd talk to another relative, and 2% said they'd talk to someone in a counselling service or a support line. What difference could you make, grown-ups? What a di- difference could your attentive kindness make in a child or young person's life? You can decide in advance not to be shocked and not to react or try and fix things to start with. (laughs) Before we think about next steps, we want to be available to hear what is weighing heavy on kids and young people's hearts. And none of us do this perfectly. All of us, though, can get better at this. All of us. All of us can slow our pace to notice and consider things that kids or young people might really need to unpack to initiate and then keep on initiating that conversation. And do you know when kids or young people are really embarrassed about something, that's when they're least likely to tell anyone. Might be a fear of what people think. Might be that they're not in a context where they think their concerns will be taken seriously. And parents, I think this is really particularly true with boys. 
Get over it. Stop crying. Man up. We can say those sorts of things as so kids sometimes. I'm not talking about not teaching resilience. We've got to teach resilience. But first we need to hear how kids are feeling. Do you know the Kids Helpline, it's a free phone counselling service for kids, said half of their contacts from children and young people under 18 are about family relationship issues. Half their contacts. And so if you as a grown-up are going through relational tension or there's breakup or breakdown in your family or extended family, your kids need you to be the big person. To frame what's happening and give them a healthy context to what they might be noticing or experiencing. You can say something like, Mum and Dad are feeling really cross and frustrated at each other at the moment. <laughs> you might have heard some words that we said, but they're our feelings and they're not your fault. And we will work them, work on them. If you don't know how to start a conversation with your children or feel you're unable to do so, seek support. We want to partner with you as a church family. And I want to honour our kids and youth leaders. Can you quickly stand up? Well, anyone who serves in kids and youth, stand up. These are magnificent adults and young people who care deeply about our children and partner with us as a local church. You can't do it on your own. You need the church to be partnering with you. When your kids can't talk to you, they're probably going to come and talk to one of these. So position them regularly in our kids and youth programs because they're building relationships that are going to help them. Particularly wanted to honour Joe and Chelsea who serve in our preschool ministry and Rachel, any of you else who serve in that. You guys, what a lot of what you do is unseen, but we honour you, we thank you. Why don't you put our hands together for them? Two-thirds of kids surveyed said they had experienced bullying at some stage of their lives and of those two-thirds, 39% said it went on for a year. A year. That's horrific. <laughs> bullying is a significant issue that more and more kids and young people need support with. And so parents and carers, you don't have to solve the whole problem for them, but you can go with them. You can help them think through options and make choices about next steps. You can help talk to their teacher. You can empower them with tools and help them set boundaries and seek out support. And you can take their concerns seriously. You can empower them with what they can do next because bullying is all about power and powerlessness. And so kids and young people, I want to ask you today, what are some things that you're worried about right now? You don't have to say them out loud because God knows and he loves and cares for you so much. He knows all about the things that have been bothering you, <laughs> even the things you feel like you can't talk to anyone about. He knows those things too. He's not surprised and he's not shocked. And he knows that there's lots of broken and sinful and selfish things in our world. And sometimes even sad things or wrong things, things that should never happen. Things that are not your fault. He knows that there are lies and confusing messages that try to trip us up or stop us from following Jesus. And in the Bible, in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus took his friends up on a mountainside and sat down with them to talk to them about life, about what really, really matters. And one of the things Jesus tells them is, do not worry. Do not worry. But he's not just talking to his friends who lived back then. Because the Bible is God's word, Jesus is talking to us today too. Those of us who are already his friends and those who haven't yet asked him to be our forever friend. Jesus is saying to us too today, do not worry. Do not worry. And to help us why he's saying do not worry, he wants us to know a really important truth. 
It's in Matthew 6, verse 24. You can't worship two gods at once. Huh? <laughs> Jesus, I thought we were talking about worry. Why are you talking about you can't worship two gods at once? What has that got to do with anything? To understand why he says do not worry, Jesus knows we need to think about who we are putting first, who we are trusting most. So he tells us this truth in Matthew 6, 24. He says, you can't worship two gods at once. Loving God, you will end up hating the other. Adoration of one feeds contempt. And contempt is thinking that something is worthless. Something is not worth paying attention to. Adoration of one feeds contempt for the other. You can't worship God and money both. You can't worship the real God and a false god, an idol or a statue at once. But an idol or a false god can be anything we love more and anything we trust more than God. We're not meant to say, I love you, God, here I am to worship, and then put other things first. And by our actions, treat other things as more important than God. But often kids and big kids we put other things first don't we what our friends think how often we get to play our ds people in our families how much better we are at soccer or music than someone else our work or our homework getting back at someone who's hurt us but god's supposed to be first in our lives you and I were made to worship him and enjoy him forever. Do you know how you can tell what you're worshipping or putting first? It's whatever you think about the most. It's whatever you spend the most of your time on. It's whatever you spend the most of your money on. You cannot put God first and money first at the same time. You cannot put God first and anything or anyone else first at the same time. And so Jesus goes on. He says in Matthew 6, If you decide for God, living a life of God worship, it follows that you don't fuss, you don't fret and worry about what's on the table at mealtimes or whether the clothes in your closet are in fashion. There is far more to your life than what you put in your stomach more to your outer appearance than the clothes you hang on your body. There's far more to your life than even just the everyday things that we worry about. And so then Jesus is looking around. What can I use as an example? And he goes, oh, there's some birds. <laughs> and he says, look at the birds, free and unfettered, not tied down to a job description, careless in the care of God. You count far more to him than birds. Some of you need to hear that today. You count far more to him than birds. Do you know how you know that? Because God loves you so much that he came to earth and was born as a baby the king of kings, born in a shed, a dirty animal shed. And he lived and walked around and showed us what God's like, showed us how God treats people, showed us what God thinks and God says and God does. But he knew his mission was to come and to die on a cross and he wasn't on there for his own sins. He went on the cross for all the things that you and I have ever done or ever thought wrong. And he was perfect, but he took the stain and the weight of our sin on him. It was because he loved you and he died and he was buried. 
but he didn't stay dead. That's the greatest news ever. He rose from the dead and he's alive. And he appeared to so many of his followers. And then he rose up to the Father in heaven and is sitting next to him at the right-hand side of God the Father. And he sent his powerful Holy Spirit, his presence, to come and live inside anyone who says, Jesus, I want to follow you. I can't try and put you first on my own. I need your help. And Jesus keeps going. In Matthew 6, he says, Has anyone by fussing in front of the mirror ever gotten taller by so much as an inch? All this time and money wasted on fashion, do you think it makes that much difference? Instead of looking at the fashions, walk out into the fields and look at the wildflowers. They never primp or shop. But have you ever seen colour and design quite like it? The 10 best dressed men and women in the country look shabby, look like they're in rags alongside them. Kids, when you go home today, I want you to go and find some flowers to look at. Big kids. When you go home today, <laughs> I want you to find some flowers to look at. Look at their beauty. Let it remind you that the same God who causes these flowers to bud and blossom cares personally for you. So that's what Jesus tells us in Matthew 6. He says, if God gives such attention to the appearance of wildflowers, most of which are never even seen... Don't you think he'll attend to you, take pride in you, do his best for you? In another translation, it says, your heavenly father knows you need, knows what you need. So Jesus is talking to us today about putting first things first. He wants us to understand. He knows all about our worries he wants us to know that worries can weigh us down and keep us from being the person God wants us to be. And so I want my vo volunteer helper, Alex, can you come up here? This is a backpack, Alex. You're a pretty special kid. You're going to hold this backpack for me, okay? And I'm going to put some books in it. And these books are some of the things that we carry around with us. Worries. Might be worry about a test you've got. Might be worried about whether you're going to play well in your school sport. Might be worried about who's going to sit with you at lunch. You might be worried about something that you feel like no one believed you if you told them. Something really bad that you think you'll get in trouble if you said anything. Might be worried that you get sick or worried about someone else who feels sick. Might be worried about what some kids at school are saying. All right, I want you to put this on your back. It's already feeling a slightly heavy. Wowza. Now, you're not going to do what I said before, are you? You're not going to flip over and land on your back, are you? No. But do you know when we hold on to worries, it's like we're carrying around this heavy backpack. And we're saying, it's all right, Jesus. I've got it. It's okay. I've got this. I'll sort it out. We're not trusting God that he can take care of us. <laughs> but Jesus comes alongside us and he's saying to us today, would you let me, would you let me take that off you? Because it's not too heavy for me. I've already carried the weight of your sin on the cross. And I can carry anything that you're facing and I can help you. Thank you, Alex. In 1 Peter 5 verse 7, it says, Turn all your worries over to him, for he cares for you. 
And we're going to do that this morning.